Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and today I'm doing a mod spotlight slash tutorial on Red Power 2. I'm going to try and cover a bunch of the aspects of Red Power 2 over a couple of different episodes, and I'm going to continue to create videos for Elram and uh, make a bunch of uh, tutorials on the new items that she's creating for the Red Power 2 mod. Uh, she's adding a bunch of awesome stuff to this mod, and uh, it's currently in pre-release 3, and uh, you definitely should be checking it out. And Without further ado, why don't I get started? Alright, so this tutorial is going to cover wiring. Let's throw down a crafting table and place bricks in an outline like this. You'll see that we're given an alloy furnace. An alloy furnace is used in red power to create redstone wiring. How do we do that, you ask? Well, first off, we're going to need a fuel source. Um, in this case, we're going to go with coal. So why don't I get myself some coal? and throw it in the fuel slot. Now the interesting thing about the alloy furnace is you don't have to place um, recipes kind of like you have to do in other interactions in Minecraft. Um, the alloy furnace can recognize stacks of items. Um, in this specific case we need one iron bar and one, two, three, see how it hasn't done anything yet? Four pieces of redstone. Let's let that cook. And as you can see it turned into a red alloy ingot. So. Let's put, you know, another set or so of these in here. And it'll continue to cook along. And the great thing about this as well is, once it finishes up with this stack, if we had said maybe put, you know, a few more of these in here, it'll do this stack and then it'll do this stack. And it'll continue along and continue to make red alloy ingots for us. So the alloy furnace is a really neat tool. Once you have three red alloy ingots, you can use those to create a wire. Simply open your crafting table and place them vertically as shown. This gives you 12 red alloy wires. What's a red alloy wire do? Well, frankly, it does the same thing redstone does in terms of transmitting energy. So if we have a lever here, we can activate it. And you can see that it transmits energy. A good example here is we can run this wire to this door and activating it opens the door. However, what makes red alloy wire a little bit different than other tools, or other redstone wiring, is that the wire can be run along a surface. So it can be run along the side of a surface, up the top, down the bottom, kind of however you want. And it can be used, pretty much, to run your wire across gaps, or just along the wall, sideways. That makes red alloy wire very powerful and very useful. So if we run red alloy wire like so, you'll see first off, activating the switch does not do anything. The red alloy wire has to be run onto the block that the switch is on. Notice it's not opening the door. The red alloy wire has to be run onto the block of the item that you need to activate. Excellent. The next feature of wiring is actually something a little bit different. If we take our red alloy ingots here and place them in a line, instead of picking up your red alloy wire, place some colored wool on the outer edges, and you'll get blue insulated wire. You can place any color wool on the outside. You can do red insulated wire. You can do yellow insulated wire. And any other color that you can find for wool, including white. Now what's in interesting about this wire, I'm actually going to go with green, because the red looks a little too easy. If you have your normal redstone wire here, your colored wire will connect to it. So let's pick this guy up, and connect him down here, as shown. So the wire does activate. Let's hook this up to the door. As you can see, the blue wiring here will activate the door. However, an interesting side effect with insulated wire is it does not transmit energy from one block to the next like redstone wire does. For example, if we place our redstone wire the way we had it before and activate the switch, the energy from the bottom block here is being transmitted up to the door through this dirt block. However, if we use insulated wiring, 
that does not occur. So with insulated wiring, energy does not transmit through the block by design. You'll also discover that one color of insulated wiring will not connect with another color. This makes for some really interesting patterns if you want to run redstone wiring right next to another. But you don't want them to connect like normal redstone wiring would. Normal redstone wiring you cannot run right next to each other without them connecting as shown. This allows for some very compact designs. Finally, if you put any color of insulated wiring in a crafting table as shown with some string, you get bundled cable. Let's make a couple of these. Bundled cable has a very unique property in that it transmits the color, the wires of all colors as shown. You can set up a system where your yellow wire goes into your bundled cable like this, and your green wire goes into a bundled cable. It all travels in one area and then can be separated later on into separate colors. And those, that one single wire will transmit all the red power current through the correct colors. So by flipping this lever, the yellow door opens. And by flipping this lever, the green door opens. That's how bundled cables work. And it allows you to basically transmit your energy through one line, but to different machines and doors. Finally, you should note that you can take an existing insulated wire and simply place a die in the table to change the color of that wire. So you can place yellow die to change it from blue to yellow, and green die to change it from blue to green. The final item requires that I show you the saw. There are two types of hand saws, iron hand saws, and diamond hand saws. And if you have the Red Power World Editing mod on, you can also use sapphires, emeralds, or rubies in place of diamonds. We'll go more into the Red Power World mod later. If we take our diamond handsaw and get ourselves some stone, you can place the diamond handsaw above stone to get a carved in half long ways. That's right, only above. And you can see as you start using the saw, it takes damage. You can then place the stone slab underneath the saw to get a stone panel, and stone panels underneath the saw to get stone covers. You can also place stone slabs to the right to get a stone slab strip, and stone covers can be placed on the right to get a stone cover slip. All these items can be placed along the world and we'll go into more of what they can do later. However, for now, we're going to need a few more stone covers. Take your stone covers and put them in an outline like so. You see that you get a hollow stone cover, and if you place a red alloy in the middle of that, you get stone jacketed wire. Stone jacketed wire does not need to sit on any surface. It can be run like some of the cables you're familiar with from other mods, and activated with a lever. This is handy if you want to run your cabling without running it on another surface. Obviously the design I have here isn't really useful, but it demonstrates how this works. This wraps up the redstone wiring tutorial for the Red Power 2 mod. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Take it easy.